All right, I think we can get started. Uh, welcome to Math 0303, Section 041, right? Everyone's in the right place. Um, I'll start off, first of all, explaining why I'm all hooked up to this computer and everything up here. I will record every single lecture that I give. So what you see up here will be put into a video that you'll be able to access online. Um, I'll be using Microsoft OneNote. I don't know if you're familiar with this at all, but uh, I'll give you an example, something I did this summer. Uh, cal ooh. Calculus. Something like, you know, I'm writing up here and just like I would on a whiteboard and it's recording the whole thing the whole time. So we'll get, it, we'll get into all the details of this later, but just that's why I'm up here like this. Um, for now, what I'd like to do is, is go through the syllabus. We no longer hand out paper, a paper syllabus to you. Uh, your syllabus is contained online. So you have to be able to get to your class. So how many of you know how to get into ACEs? Everyone okay with that? Anyone who doesn't know, you need to come talk with me, okay, after class. So the way to get to ACEs, you go to uh, Northwest Vista's website, right? And then you have to log in here. Now, hopefully this will work. It's been very slow this morning. Okay, where do I go from here? My courses. So go to my courses. Everyone see that tab there? And then from here, you should have a list. Make sure you're in the right semester. Um, scroll down and should have a list of your classes here. You click on the one that, that applies to this class. So we are in Intermediate Algebra Section 041. Click on that. It's going to bring you to what's called Canvas. How many of you have seen Canvas already? Okay. Anyone that has not seen Cam Canvas? Okay. So if you have questions on this later, you, you can uh, talk to me. This is the main page of our class. You can see the syllabus here. We've got the schedule. We have the recorded uh, class lecture. So when I take this and post it online, later on you come back, you wanna watch it. You click there, it'll bring up an index of all the videos for, for this class, okay? And then they'll be sorted by date. Well, actually, I don't know if you noticed the, the name when I named that file. It's not really relevant. It's, some, it's gonna be like 0303, uh, the date, the um, class, because I, I do a class right after this, uh, 0303, so 11 a.m., then it'll, it'll say what we covered. So 7.5 is what we're covering today. So that way you can kind of make sense out of what, you know, what's what. And then if you're new to Canvas, you've never uh, used Canvas, there's a little introduction video I did. It just shows you how you can set up your profile so that when I send out something to the class, you know, you'll get a text on your phone or y you can get it sent to your Yahoo email instead of your, your um, Alamo email. But that, if you watch that little video, it'll show you how you can configure your profile, okay? All right, so the things here, the first thing is the syllabus. So you're gonna have to click on that. Next Monday, I'm gonna pass around a sign, not a sign-in sheet, but it's gonna be like, you're gonna put your signature saying, I have read the syllabus, I understand the requirements of the course, and that'll be our contract. You know, I agree to stick to the syllabus if you agree that you understand it, all right? So I'm giving you one week to sort out any questions you might have over the syllabus. Uh, yeah, see, this is really, really slow. So what I did, because I knew it might be slow, is I went ahead and saved it as a PDF so I could just open it here if need be. So here's the syllabus. Now, these, this new syllabus, we, we have to use this starting this, sem this semester. So every single one of your classes should have this a syllabus that looks like this. It's called Concourse, that's what we're using. And so there's a lot of junk in here that I had no control over. It was automatically put into, into the syllabus. And most of it's way at the bottom. It's all like the district policies and stuff. So let me just show you what's important here. Uh, first of all, my, the contact information. I did not, uh, this is the math department. That's the information math department. And then me, I, I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Robert DiGiovanni. Um, you can call me Robert. You can call me. 
Mr. Robert, you can call me Mr. D. Giovanni, Mr. D. And whatever, just as long as it's not, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Just decent level of respect. Is that all right? Okay. Uh, there's my email. Uh, but really, you email me through Canvas, going up to your inbox and, and sending me stuff that way. My office location, that's my cell phone number. So no one can ever say, oh, you know, I missed the test, but I didn't know how to get in touch with you. You have my cell phone number. Uh, my office hours. Um, how many first time in college students do we have? Uh, this is like your first time, only one, two, three, okay. So everyone else can explain what office hours are, right? What are office hours? Okay, for what? To help you, okay? Now, if you don't come into my office for help, I, I'm forced to sit on the Yahoo website and sit there and just scroll through all the little, you know, what's going on in the world and just, it's boring, boring, boring. So I encourage you to come in and get help, all right? That's, I'm required to be there. And so it's up to you to take advantage of that. Now, I'll kind of make this a little bigger. I know it's hard to read. I'm there before our class for an hour and a half. So before class today, an hour and a half, I was, I'm in my office. Then I teach another class right after this, and that ends at 1.45, and then I'm free. I'll eat a little lunch in there, and then 2 o'clock to 3, I'm here for an hour. So hopefully that works for you on Monday, Wednesday. On Tuesday, Thursday, I'm only in my office from 12.45 to 3. And then on Fridays, I'm there from 9.30 in the morning till noon. And if you need to make an appointment with me, we can always make an appointment, right, if need be. So if there's a time here that you can't make any of these times, but maybe you can make some other time, just get with me. Maybe I can work it into my life, okay? Questions on office hours? If you live in Kerrville and you're going to drive all the way in town on Friday to come meet me for my office hours, I recommend you call ahead, text me, say, hey, I'm on my way, everything good for today. Because you never know. Sometimes, you know, life happens. And if I step out of my office for a meeting or have to go, you know, somewhere else and you show up and you drove an hour to get here, I'd feel terrible. So, you know. Hey, can you come back? Yeah, sure. Okay, because I'm recording all this right now. No, it's okay. All right. Okay, the book. So if you... If you took the class before this, um, then you would have this book already, so you don't have to buy a new one. Uh, it's McKenna Kirk, first edition. What is that? What kind of flower is that on the front? I don't know. Looks kind of like a blue bonnet. Anyways, any, how much are those? Anyone buy it yet, recently? No? No one's bought it recently? Okay, you need to have this in your possession by next class. Now, if I give assignments, and you don't have a book, it's still your responsibility. I believe the library has the book on hold, so you can go in there and copy problems down, find a neighbor of yours who has the book. But you, you have to have that book by Wednesday, all right? Because we'll be working out of it. Questions so far? Uh, prerequisites, objectives, I'm just going to skip over all that. Outcomes, I'm going to skip that. Just go to the grades. I'll try and zoom this in a little bit for you. So we, we have a, hmm, that's incorrect now I look at it. You see where it says like 90 to 100 A, 80 to 89 B? That was put in by, the, by someone else, not me. I didn't look at it till right now. In this class, a C is a 75 to a 79. And there is no D in this class. So I have to, I'm gonna have to edit that. There's only an A, B, C, F, that's it. So anything below a 75 in this class is considered not passing. Okay? I'll, I'll edit that. Um, the breakdown of how the grade is determined. You'll have quizzes. That'll be 15% of your grade. You'll have three exams, 20% each, 60% of your grade. You'll have a final, which is 20%. And then you have a lab. And the lab is right across the hall and down is a big lab. You're supposed to log 600 minutes in that lab for the whole semester. So that's a place where you're supposed to go and do your homework. And it's a walk-in lab. You don't have to be there like every Tuesday at three o'clock. Just anytime you have free time, 
Go in there, do your homework. The idea is that there's a bunch of other people in there doing homework just like you, and you can get help. There's tutors that walk around. But it's required that you have 600 minutes by the end of the semester. Okay, and I get like a bi-weekly report on that, and I'll know how many minutes you have, and I'll put it in your grades, as you'll see here in just a second. I'll log how many minutes you have. So the goal is 600. If you, if you spend 3,000 minutes in there, that's fine. You just, you're supposed to um, do 600. If you do 300, then that would be half, and you get a 50 for that, 50%. But all of that together is only 5% of your grade. Okay? Questions? All right. Course policies. Attendance. So I have this new attendance. There's this new attendance uh, thing that I'm going to show you here. It's pretty cool. Um, we'll be able to keep track of, of whether or not you're here pretty easily. Uh, we're going to give everyone an injection. It's like a little um, RFID chip that's going to go into the kind of the base of your skull. No? Not there yet? No? Okay, I'll just have to call attendance then or pass a sign-in sheet around. Um, but I will take attendance. And this is important. Because I post my videos, if you miss a lecture, you're sick, whatever, you can go watch it. The idea is that, hey, look, I'm doing that to help you, all right? Or, you know, so that you don't miss a class and all of a sudden you're behind. You can go watch exactly what you missed, right? But that is not a substitute for being here. So even if you're an A student, you're doing everything great, and you just don't come to class, I can fail you for that, all right? So it says it right here. If you don't come, you can be withdrawn. I can drop you or I can fail you at the end of the semester for non-attendance, regardless of your grade, all right? So I will always warn you ahead of time, you know, hey, you're about to get dropped or I, you know, your grade is now up to me because you've been absent more than four times. So four absences is all you get. Now I do have a policy on electronic devices. You're not gonna like this. Okay, you're, you're required to silence and store out of sight all electronic devices such as phones, iPods, laptops, etc. The consequences for using such a device in class 10 point penalty on your next exam. Okay. Ma'am, what did I just say? Okay. I just want to make sure you caught that because you're using one. I, I'm not going to penalize you, but. So I realize it's the digital age and I'm sitting here using all the technology and stuff, but still, when it comes down to it, you're here for what, hour, 15 minutes? What is it? Hour, 15 minutes. So try and just, you know, break contact from the digital world for that, for that amount of time. Let all your friends know you're not gonna update your Facebook status while you're in class today, okay? Because it's gonna cost you. And I, you know, it's just, that's my policy. Now, if you have a tablet that has, has something like this and you're taking notes like, you know, like this, that's okay. You just need to approve that with me first. Um, I also have a behavior policy. So sleeping or being disruptive in class will result in, again, a 10% penalty on your next exam. I uh, usually don't have problems with disruptive behavior, but sleeping, you know, this is college, right? This is in high school. You know, in high school, I used to have a backpack that had a pillow in it. And that's what I, I mean, I had the backpack with the books and I had the one with the pillow. And if I was tired, I'd take the pillow, right? And that's just, that's the way it was. But in college, if, you, if you're sleeping, you're gone. You're out of here. Stay home and sleep. Go sleep on one of the benches. Don't come in here to sleep though, All right? You'll be asked to leave. And you cost, cost you 10 points. Scholastic dishonesty, that's cheating. So... If you cheat in this class, I pretty much just understand that no matter what it is, quiz, you know, if, if, if you're supposed to work alone on it and you don't, and I find out that you don't somehow, then um, I pretty much usually go to the full extent of what I can do, which is to fail you. I'll just give you an F in the class. That's it. We're done. Okay, so I have zero tolerance for that. So if, you've, if you somehow got, you know, this far by always, you know, working with someone else, you're going to have to do it on your own this time. Uh, tutoring. So right across the hall, I already said, you have that lab you have to go to, but that's also just an open lab you can go to for tutoring anytime. 
okay, for even if you get past this class into college algebra, if you're taking more than that, you can always go to that lab. Six drop rule. Um, I have to have that in legally. Um, the SOBI statement. The SOBI statement has to do with um, strategies of behavioral inter intervention. And I'll be honest, I haven't really read through all of this in detail, okay? But I think it has something to do with like, let's try and figure out if someone in here is like gonna come in here and try and kill us all, you know? Like if you see someone acting kind of weird, you know, and you see like a gun sitting, hanging out of their backpack, you know, or, you know what I'm saying? Like, let's keep our eyes open. Let's pay attention to each other. And if, if your neighbors start, you know, if the person that you've never met start talking about, you know, just weird stuff and you feel weirded out, don't be that one person that was like, you know, he told me that he just wanted to take everyone out with him. And, you know, I, I should have known. I should have said something. No, say something. Okay. Say something. We got to pay attention. Um, and I always like to do this. I don't like to do it, but we have to do it. In the event that there is a, uh, an issue in the class or in the hallway or in the school where we hear someone just completely opening up out there with, with a gun, we're on the third floor. But, ooh, not this window. Okay, that window over there, maybe. maybe. This one is a, is a three-story drop, okay? <laughs> just so you know that. We might, we might want to do that instead of take the bullet. Oops, sorry. Okay, so there is an awning here. Okay, it's about 15, I don't know, 12 feet. You'll live. You'll survive that fall. Okay? I would break the block and throw a chair. Well, that was the next thing we have to determine. Okay? So, okay. unless the ladies want to do it, the guys will throw a table through the window. Right? <laughs> I know we laugh about this or whatever, but it, it's serious. I mean, it, it's one of those things. I was raised by my dad to always sit in the restaurant facing the door, always to know where the exits are. And it's not paranoia, it's just being prepared, right? It, I always know whenever I'm at a restaurant, if someone comes in the door with, with a gun, I know exactly where I'm going. Every single, place, every single public place I ever go to, I always know where I'm going if that happens. So, you know, it's, there's a thing, I quote, I always say it to my students, I never look it up. It's something like, um, luck, luck is preparation meets opportunity or something like that. So, hopefully it won't ever happen, but at least we know that's a survivable path out of this room if we need to do it, all right? Sobe statement, interesting stuff. All right, this is the schedule of like day by day what we're covering. Now, this syllabus, you can print it, but it'll print out like eight pages. It's really long. So I put the schedule somewhere else where you can print it out and it's just the schedule, okay? Um, and, and so I'll bring that up in just a second. What else is here? Additional items the value of an associate's degree. The college is trying to really push people to go get an associate's degree. Even if you're gonna get the bachelor degree, get the associate's first. And so here's a little statement about why you should do it. And then here's where all the institutional stuff, this is stuff I had no option of having in here. But it, you know, you need to read through it because if at some point comes back to the, you know, you're challenging something, They'll just point to the syllabus and be, it was right there, and then I will hand them the thing saying, you signed it, and so. Okay, any questions on the syllabus? Let me get back to this. So the schedule here, now I'm back here at the schedule. The schedule, I'm going to open this, is our day-by-day, -day, blow by blow what we're going to do. So today is... It reads across, right? Monday, August 26th, we're gonna talk about the syllabus and then we're gonna actually start doing problems, solving rational equations. And there's a page and a homework set. So you already have the homework assignment for today. Now, this is very important. This schedule is what I plan to do, all right? You can't just not show up to class 
and then assume that's what we did and that's what the homework was. Every single day when I come into class, I will put the homework assignment on, I'll project it and I will record that. So anytime you miss class, what I would recommend you do is go watch the video because that's going to tell you everything you missed, including the homework. All right? Any questions on that? When's our first test scheduled? September 25th. Hey, next Monday's a holiday. So I can't have you sign that thing on Monday. I forgot next Monday is a holiday. So we'll say Wednesday. So you have until Wednesday to read the syllabus. All right. And then we have a final exam. Our final exam is the first Monday. Like, you know how finals t all take place in the same week? Yours is the first. It's the Monday of the of finals. So that, uh, that exam, that final exam is from 11 to 145. So it's almost three hours. I don't know if the exam will actually be that long, but we have that much time if we need it. Any questions yet? Yes. I was hoping you would say something like that or someone would ask about, hey, on the test, can we use cheat sheets, things like that. Here's my normal policy, but you won't know until each exam takes place. Before each exam, I'll give a review and I will tell you, you know, yes, you can use a calculator. Um, and, and in this class, 0303, I encourage you to use a calculator because you're about to go into college algebra normally from here and there you have to use a calculator. So calculators are allowed. Um, you're normally allowed to have a single cheat sheet for every test and that cheat sheet can have steps, procedures, hints, but it cannot have worked out problems. So, but we'll get to that when we get to the, the exam. Any other questions about calendar, syllabus, exams, anything else? Quizzes. Quizzes can come in the form of anything. Okay, so I could, I could walk in here and say, we're going to do an individual quiz. Here's the problem. Do it. Or I can say it's a group quiz. Or I can say it's a take-home quiz. Or I can give you a couple of problems at the end of class. And if, if no one finishes all of them, I'll say, hey, you know what? Just hand it in next time as a quiz. I like to give quiz grades. Okay, because if you're not here, you don't get to make them up. Okay, so if you miss, unless you have like, you know, an authorized doctor's note excuse, you know, then we can work from that. Or if you were really sick. But normally I will drop one or two quizzes. So if you miss because you weren't feeling well, well, that's one of your drops, you know, or if you had to go somewhere else, that's fine. One of your, one of your drop quizzes. Okay. Let me get back to this. Recorded lectures. Let me just click on it so you see what it looks like. It's this thing that'll say media site, and then it'll have the, the videos listed here. Right now, there's nothing there, okay? But that's what you'll see. And then the Canvas introduction. That's only for people who haven't ever used this system before. Now, on the left-hand side, we also have a discussion board. You'll see on the left there, there's, it's kind of cut off, but discussions. Um, if you, if you wish to discuss anything with classmates, feel free to come here. You can exchange things. You can attach files, scan things like, hey, I was working this homework problem out. Here's what I got. It's just a place where you can talk to each other, okay? Grades. So I'm going to scroll over here. Well, I have a bunch of names there. I have a bunch of... Uh, grades listed here for the whole semester. If you click on grades, what'll happen is it'll just bring up you and it'll list all your grades for the semester. And what I'm gonna be doing is just every time you have a quiz or something, I'm gonna input it here. So you should be able to access your grades real time. So if you take a test on a, on a Wednesday, I probably have it graded by Thursday. The grade will probably pop up. You won't have to wait till the next Monday when we meet to know your grade, all right? And it also will keep your average for, the, for where you are in the class. Questions on grades? Okay, people, that's just a way that you can link to other people in the class. Files, let me see what's in files. Files, I have, the schedule is in there. Remember I brought up the schedule a second ago? I have it sitting in the file. So sometimes what I'll do is like, I'll give an exam and I'll say, hey, the solutions to the exam, I made the solutions, just go look in your files, in the files for the class, I have put it there. And that's what I mean. Just go explore it in the files. Attendance. 
This is the last, um, the last little tab here that we'll see. Let me see how this attendance thing works. I don't know if we're going to keep this seating arrangement. How do you all feel about this? Does everyone feel like they're in a comfortable position to see the screen? You're okay over there? Okay, let's try this. We'll try and, and learn some names here. We're going to start at the back of the classroom, and we'll go with the lady who's kind of by herself there. What is your name, ma'am? Okay, what we're doing right now is we are just setting up the seating arrangement in the room, okay? Then we'll go to the back corner there, sir. I still like the idea of putting a chip in everyone's head. Okay, who's next to Renee? This might help me learn names. We're just going to do that table now, sir. Right here. Are you? you? Yes. Alex? Okay. I don't know if I can change, like, to a nickname or something. I'm just going, this is the roster's name thing, so I, I don't have a lot of control over that. Yeah. John. And there's no one sitting in front of you. You okay right there? I, I think that's like a primo seat right there. So, what's your name? And then right here. We don't have to do this every day, okay? This is just the setup, okay? Who's next to Robert there? Okay, then two ladies over here. Back. What is it? Valerie? Riley. Riley. Okay. And then. Oops. Haley. There you are. I'm hoping this will just be a one time thing. We get it set up and then attendance will be easy. Yes. Okay. Now here we'll start. And then right here, we're getting close. Um, Joan, I know Joan. How you doing, Joan? I'm good. Nicole, all right. Okay. Go. Okay. And then. Okay, let's do, how many are there? Four over there? So let's go, sir. Ah. Okay, man. Say it one more time. Okay. And last. So it's going to be important for everyone that next time we're going to try and have, you know, make these seats like be the same and don't be moving around a bunch. If you do, let me know because this is the way I'm going to try to take attendance. What will happen is, well, it's going to be like this. Um, make sure I don't need to save this or anything. I think that's it. You see a save? I don't see a save. Okay. Here we go. So now I click take attendance. And what I do is, you know, maybe I'm giving you a, a group assignment, right? I just come in here and go like this. Make sense? So I don't even need to call attendance. I just look at the seat. And if you're there, you're there. If you're not, you're not. Okay. And that'll be, that'll basically be it for every day. Good. Okay. Still want to do the chip, but District doesn't like the idea. Anything else here? Go back to this home screen. I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. Nope. I think I've covered everything that I wanted to with, the, with as far as the syllabus. So are there any other questions? No? Okay. Uh, we need to get the lighting in here to work because you need to be able to write stuff down but you also need to be able to uh, see the board. So let's, let's
what I normally do is I like to crack one of those windows just a little bit to get some light in the back. If for some reason the lighting in here is like messing you up, giving you headaches or something like that, come talk to me. And if you can't see the board because of a glare, let me know also and I'll kind of adjust you. I'm ready to roll. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about maybe where you came from. So how many of you have not taken a math class here at Northwest Vista? Have not. Okay, so, and the others have, so I will assume that you've taken maybe one of the courses leading up to this class. We're going to have kind of a mixture of, of different skill levels here, all right? But there are prerequisites for this class. There are things that you're expected to know. And the, one of the big ones is factoring. Factoring. So we're going to start today where I'm supposed to start in 7.5, but keep in mind that there may be some things where you're like, what the heck? My recommendation would be anything you don't know, you put a little star next to it, and then you either talk to me or you go to the tutoring lab and you address those issues. Like I had no idea what he was talking about when he said this, and let them help you. Because if you start off behind, it's gonna be really hard to catch up, okay? So let's get going here, see how this works. I'm gonna close all my internet stuff out. Close all that, get that out of there. feel like I'm forgetting something. All right. Oh, I did, I did forget this. I already told you I'm going to make a video of this, right? But I'm also, everything I write down here, you can go look at the video, but I'm also going to save all this as a PDF. And then remember in the, in the Canvas thing, it said files, right? Files. If you click on that, Inside there, there will be a folder. It'll say class notes. And if you click on that, open it, it'll have everything I write down here on, you know, in something that you could print out if you wanted to. Now, the idea is not that, that you'll sit there and not take notes, but what's more important to me is you paying attention and asking questions instead of sitting there and going, oh, shit, I'll figure all this shit out later. Let me just write it down, you know? I'd rather you try and figure it out now and ask your questions now and worry about the duplicating what I'm doing later, okay? Make sense? We'll see how it works. So the first thing that we're going to talk about here, everyone can see this okay? Any problems with that? Uh, the section we're doing 7.5, solving equations containing uh, rational expressions. So solving equations, when you see that, that means that your answer is usually gonna be like a number, right? Like x equals two, or x equals a fraction, or what other, what other things happen when you solve equations sometimes? What do you sometimes get when you solve an equation? Are all, can you solve every equation? No, so sometimes it's possible to get like no solution, right? And it's even possible sometimes to get infinitely many solutions, right? So we have all these different things, but the, the key here is that when you see solve equation, your brain should automatically be thinking, I'm going to get an answer, right? I should get an answer for this. Some numerical answer or maybe no solution or, or all real numbers or something like that. And then we are solving equations that have rational expressions in them. Rational expressions, what does that mean? What is a rational expression? Hmm? Any, any ideas? Rational? What does the word rational mean or where it comes from? Look at the first five letters of the word rational. Ratio. A ratio is a fraction, right? A ratio is a fraction. So basically this is saying in this section, we will be solving equations that involve fractions. Why didn't they just say that, right? We're going to have fractions with some equations. Well, because we don't do anything easy, right? We make everything hard for you. 
So let's first start out by defining what a rational function is, then we're going to talk about the domains of functions, then we're going to talk about equations, then we're going to go solve them. All right, so the, what I'll do here is a lot of times is I'll have all the notes together like this, and I'll come in here and I'll add space so I can write in there now. So now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to write what you need to know about rational functions. So a function, a rational function is a function that looks like this. We like to write this, don't we, whenever we talk about functions? How do we say that? f of x equals a polynomial divided by some other polynomial. Now you have to know what a polynomial is in order for you to understand what that means, which we'll talk about in just a second. Now the book won't write polynomial over polynomial, they'll put p of x over q of x. But each one of those things, the p and the q are just polynomials. Now does, it, can, does anyone remember or can anyone tell me what a polynomial is or give me an example of a polynomial? Poly meaning many, right? Nomial meaning, nomial is a term. So a polynomial is something with many terms in it. So let me, let me put an example here of a polynomial. I'm just going to say poly. Uh, x cubed plus 3x squared minus 1. That's a polynomial. Can you all see this okay? Is this large enough? Colors are coming through all right? Everyone's fine? Okay. That's an example of a polynomial. Is this an example of a polynomial? So this is more of a question. Is that also a polynomial? Sure. There's one thing th there that makes that not a polynomial. The square root. See, here's the condition on a polynomial. On a polynomial, you have a bunch of things that are separated by addition and subtraction, okay? So you have pluses and minuses between things. But each of the things, if it has a variable like x in it, the power on that x has to be an integer, positive or non-negative non integer. So you can only have x to the third, x to the fourth, x squared, x to the first power. When you have square root of x, yeah, the square root of x really means x to the one-half power. So that's a fraction as a power, and that is not a polynomial. So anytime you have roots or fractions, in pa fractions as the powers, it is no longer a polynomial. All right? Now, we're, I'm not going to throw a problem at you where I trick you and ha, 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 that wasn't a polynomial. But we need to understand what it is, Okay. So a polynomial, anytime you take a polynomial and divide it by another polynomial, you create a rational function. All right, let me give you some examples of an example of a rational function. f of x equals x squared minus 9 over x squared plus 4x. So the numerator there, the numerator is which, which part? The top or the bottom? Top, right? Top is the numerator. Denominator is the bottom one, right? So the numerator is a polynomial because it has x squared, then minus 9. Multiple terms, and the x's have integer powers. The bottom, same thing, right? x squared is okay, plus, all right, you have a second term there, 4x. What's the power on that x if it's not written? 1, okay. So that's okay to have. Any questions? That's a rational function. Okay, now that we have the idea of just, you know, rational function, let's talk a little bit about domains. A domain is, is one of these concepts that seems to confuse students. So I'll do my best to try and explain what a domain is. A domain... 
are all the numbers numbers you may plug into the function. That's just a rule like, hey, you're just talking to someone and you're not being real technical. You're just like, hey, it's just the numbers that you're allowed to plug in, all right? That's the domain. So let's take a look now at the function I just put up there. What was it? X squared minus 9 over x squared plus 4x. Can you take a number and plug it into Can you take any number you want and plug it in there? I mean, you can try, right? Like, uh, if I wanted to know what's, what's f of 1, then I would take 1 and replace all my x's with 1's, right? So what would I get? 1 minus 9 over 1 plus 4. So I get negative 8 over 5, and that would be it. Are you all comfortable with what I did there? Any questions on that? Can you plug anything you want in? Or are there some numbers that cause problems? Well, with, with a rational function, since a rational function is a fraction, what is the one thing you can never have in the denominator of a fraction? Zero, right? Are we all okay with the idea that if you have a fraction and you have something on top and you have a zero on the bottom, that this is very bad, right? Very bad. In fact, we can't do it mathematically. Like, you cannot divide by zero, right? So we have to sit here and we have to pay attention to this. We have to make sure that when we're doing this, we never get zero in the bottom, in the denominator. But it, it'll happen if I plug in a certain number. How about zero? Try plug zero in. What do you get? In the numerator, what do you get? What do you get if you plug in zero to the top? Negative nine. And what do you get if you plug zero into the bottom? Well, that four would multiply times zero though, wouldn't it? I mean, wouldn't that be zero squared plus four times zero? But that four times zero is zero, isn't it? So that would give you zero. So you have negative nine divided by zero and that's just a huh? That's undefined. You cannot do that. So there is a number that I just showed you, zero. You can't plug that in. That's not allowed because our mathematical system does not allow for it. Are there any others? Well, we could sit here and guess, right, and keep trying different numbers and just kind of throwing them out. But that's inefficient, isn't it, to just guess? So instead of guessing, what we do is we think through it. What is the thing we're trying to avoid? A zero in the denominator, right? So why don't we ask ourselves th this question? What would make that denominator zero, right? I just highlighted it. What makes that zero? So that really just equates to taking the denominator and setting it equal to zero and solving it. So we're asking ourselves, what would make that zero, right? What would make that zero? Because that's where I'm gonna have a problem. Now this is an equation and I look at it and I say, how do I solve this equation? And this is, remember I said there's one thing I was hoping everyone would walk in here with, the ability to factor. So can you factor that? So let's, let's just verbally go over the process for factoring anything. The first step to factor anything is GCF. Greatest common factor. Is there something that both of those terms, and what I mean by terms is here's one term, here's the other. Is there something that both of those have in common? One X, right? So what you do is you pull that X out, or we say you pull it out. It's, it's a factoring of the X to come out then you put a set of parentheses. And then what would be in that set of parentheses there? X plus four. Now that you have factored and you have turned that, I put a little red dot there. That's now multiplication of two things, isn't it? It's X times that. Whenever you have something times something equals zero, you can take each one and set them both equal to zero. So here's where actually 
split this up into two separate problems. I set the first factor equal to zero, and then I set the second factor equal to zero. This is called the zero factor property. So the first one, the first equation, I'm actually done, x equals zero. There's nothing to solve there, right? If I tell you, hey, look, x is zero, okay? And then I go, then I ask you, what's x? You're gonna say what? Zero, right? That's already telling you x is zero is one answer. The other one, x plus four equals zero, you actually have to do one thing. You have to move that four to the other side of the equation by subtracting four on both sides. So you get x is what? Negative four, good. So you may not have realized it when you looked at the function initially, right, back up here. You may not have realized it that you plug in zero, you've got problems, right? But there's also another number that causes problems, negative four. And if you want, you can check it for yourself. Try and plug negative four in and you should get zero over zero. I mean, sorry, you should get zero on the bottom, okay? So we have a special number, I mean, special number. We have a special name for these things. These are what we're going to refer to later as our excluded values. Excluded meaning don't include, right? These are values that we do not want to include later when we're trying to solve equations. We'll say, hey, throw these out because you can't plug them in. Are we okay with this? So I'll put that next to, next to these. These right here, called, we're going to call these excluded values. All right, now let's, let's get straight into um, rational equations. Ooh, how am I gonna do this? Okay, rational equations. So what we just looked at right now is a rational function, right? It wasn't an equation. And from that, we looked at it and said, oh, hey, look, um, when you have a rational function, you have to be careful with some excluded values. But now it's time to talk about the equation. So I think what I'd like to do is first start off by showing you one, and then we're going to try and solve one. Those are a bunch of steps. We'll get to those in a second. Here's what a rational equation could look like. Uh, 5 over x plus 8 over 7 equals 13 over x. So the first thing that I will point out is that we have an equal sign, right? That's what makes it an equation. The left side equals the right side. We're trying to figure out what x value right? What x would you plug in here and here to make that equation true? What x would work? Well, we could sit here all day and look at it, right? And be like, hmm, no, let me try one. No, does one work? Oh, let me try two. We could try it all day long and we could guess and we could not ever get it, okay? So again, it's, that's not efficient. That's not the way to solve a problem like this. We need a set of steps, a procedure. So we have one. Luckily for us, there is a procedure for, for being able to solve this. And the procedure is set forth below. I Remember I said on a test you're allowed to have a cheat sheet, right? This would be a perfect example of something that you would want to put on that cheat sheet, right? Because it's, it lays it out there for you. You still have to know when you get to the test, oh, look, that's a rational equation. That means I have to refer to this on my cheat sheet, but at least you have the steps there. Some instructors don't let you even have that much so you know I'm not trying to say I'm nice because I'm not but it's just you know for me with this in this day and age it's more about being resourceful than it is about I memorized everything it's just not that's not practical even an engineer is going to go to a table or they're going to look something up on the web if they need it they go get that information my wife is a uh, a PA 
You know what a PA is? Physician assistant. And even then, I mean, they have little I, I, I whatever apps, you know, and they're sitting there with their patient and they'll be like, and they'll look it up and it'll, the app will tell them what the heck that is wrong, you know? So it's, it's, it's not practical to think that everyone should memorize every single little thing. But you need to know when to use it, right? Okay, so there are the steps. The first thing we'll do is determine excluded values, right? That's what we were just talking about. What are the things that we can't plug in? That'll give us, remember, the division by zero? Then we'll find an, what is that? LCD, what does that stand for? Least common denominator. So maybe you don't remember what that is, but we'll, we'll, we'll work with it when we get to an example. Next thing that you do after you find your least common denominator. Multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. After you've done that, you should no longer have any fractions. So you solve whatever equation is sitting there. It, it could be a linear equation, could be a quadratic equation, just whatever's there, you now have to go after and, and tackle. And that would be where the prerequisites for this course would come in. I know for a fact in my 0302 we did this. So this is probably, you probably have already seen this if you took 0302 class before this one. Uh, after you solve it, you, you look at the answers that you get and you make sure that none of the answers you get in step four match up with any of the answers you got in step one because remember in step one those told you you can't have those answers. So you have to, you kind of kind of hash through what you got at the end and then you're supposed to check your answers. Okay, let's do an example. I'm going to do an example, and then you're going to do an example. So here we go. Let's go back to that one. 5, x, 5 over x plus 8 over 7 equals, pardon me? Multiply. Well, I'm going to go through the steps. That's what I'm, I'm going to follow the procedure, all right? You may have a way of doing this already and you're comfortable with it. And, and I would encourage you, if you know how to do this and you're comfortable, stick with it. But if it's wrong, you need to find another way. And I'm trying to show you one, right? So I'm not here to reteach you things if you already know them, but just you need to be confident that the way you're doing it is correct. All right, so what is my first step according to the steps? Derm determine excluded values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all my denominators and I'm going to ask myself with all the denominators, is there any possibility that any of those denominators could ever be zero? Yes. Now the seven can't, right? The seven is seven. But x by itself, x can be zero, can it? If x is zero. Right, if I try and plug zero in for x, I get division by zero right away. Yes? Is an excluded value. What that means is this. That's right. No matter what happens from here on out, whatever my steps tell me and I multiply both sides and I work it all out, if you get zero after that, this step tells you, uh-uh, throw it out. Because if you look back at this original problem, you can't plug zero in. You get division by zero. Okay? That's step one. What's step two? LCD, right? LCD. So how do you find LCDs? Again, this is something that hopefully you've seen before. Look at all your denominators and you form some term from all of them. You would need an x. Now, you'd only need one x, right? Because if you say, look, I need an x for that first one, right? If I put that down here, I need an x. Then when you get to the second x and say, hey, I need an x, you look back down and you say, I already have an x. I don't need another one. So if they both have an x, then you only need one. But you also need a what? A 7. See, you have a 7 there, don't you? So you need a 7 in your LCD. So your LCD is 7x. Questions on that? Again, this is one of those things. If you don't know what LCD is, LCD, you write it down, then you go to the tutoring lab. Huh? Well, what was he talking about? 
All right, what's the third step after you find the LCD? Multiply each side by the LCD. So watch the way I do this. I'm going to write down the original problem. And I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 7x, right? So I'm going to watch the way it is. I'm going to take the left side has two terms, doesn't it? So I'm putting in parentheses and I'm putting a 7x out in front. On the right side, it's only one term. So I'm just going to put a 7x next to it like that. Is that okay with you to do it like that? Does that kind of make sense that way? What you do to one side, you have to do the other. Now on the left side, I will have to distribute the 7x through to each term. On the right side, I just multiply straight across. <coughs> now, that's exactly what I was going to ask you. The 7x, where does it go? What does it multiply to? Do you multiply the 7x times the 5? and the x on the bottom, or do you do just the 5 or just the x? Where does that 7x go? Just the numerator. Because what you really want to do is you want to look at that 7x as really being a 7x over 1. And then what you're doing is you're multiplying the 7x times the 5 and the 1 times the x. Is that all right? That's right. Your denominator will not change. That clear for everyone? Same with the other side, that's 7x over 1. Okay, so someone tell me what my next line is with, and don't cancel anything out. Just tell me straight, just multiply across, what do you get? 35x over x plus 56x over 7 equals the other side, what? 13 times 7. 91? 91x over x. Everyone agree with that? Yeah, uh, this is not step 4 yet. All I've done is multiplied through. This is all still step 3. All I've done is multiplied through now. Now, what I would like to do before I get to step four, which is to solve the equation, I'd like to cancel things that I can. N yeah, notice that you've got these x's will cancel, right? These x's over here cancel each other out. 56 divided by 7 is what? 8. So what we really have here is a 35 plus an 8x equals the 91. Yes? Okay. That's step three, multiply through. Step four, solve the remaining equation. So on step four, I look at that equation and I'm going to ask myself, how in the world do I solve that? Well, it might help if I know what type of equation this is. Can anyone tell me what type of equation this is? Linear. Who said that? Good. It's a linear equation. What makes it linear? Why is it not quadratic? What, how do you know it's a line? Okay. That's true. It's, it's a linear equation. Say, say again? Mm, the equal sign just makes it an equation. That's right. It's the fact that the x in the problem is raised to what power? 1. If you have an equation that has a variable and the x is raised to the first power, it is called a linear equation. If you have an equation and the x is raised to the second power in the problem, it is called a quadratic equation. If you have an equation and the x is raised to the 80th problem, to the 80th power, you've got a major problem, <laughs> right? But the thing is, it's, it's like you've got linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic, fifth degree, sixth degree, seventh degree, eighth degree, and it keeps going higher and higher and higher. 
we only study in here, you know, first, second, first power, second power, third power, fourth sometimes, fifth college algebra, fifth, sixth, seventh, okay, but linear. And the reason why it's important to know what type of equation it is, is because the way that you attack this problem is different than the way that you attack a quadratic problem. How do you solve linear equations? Can anybody tell me? Yes. Okay. What you're saying is correct. That's what I wanted to hear. The technique for solving a linear equation is to isolate the variable. Get the variable by itself. That's different than a quadratic equation. Quadratic equations we like to move everything to one side and make it equal zero. Then we like to factor. We like to use quadratic formula. That's a totally different technique than a linear equation. So we, you kind of got to know what you're working with before you start doing math on it, right? All right, so I'm going to do this linear equation. I'm going to, as was stated, subtract 35 on both sides. So 86, or 86, 8x equals, what is this, 56? And then... What do you do now? Divide, both sides by, Divide by, by both sides by 8. Why not subtract? Why not subtract? Do the opposite of what's there, but what's there? What's the 8x really mean? 8 times x, right? So to get rid of the 8 times x, you, eight, you divide. So, okay. Just making sure. Uh, 56 divided by 8 is 7 last time I checked. Okay, so that's step four. Step five would be to check. Where do you plug it in? To the original problem. Five over X. And this is important. Anytime you check an answer, you always have to plug it into the original. Oh, you know what? One thing I didn't point out in step uh, four there. Or no, step five. I think I got ahead of myself. Step five was not check, was it? What was step five? Is it an excluded value, right? Oops. Step five, I'll put it right above it. Is x equals seven excluded? No. That means that can be an answer. It's okay to have that as an answer. Y'all see where I stuck the five in there? Is x equals seven excluded? No. What was the only excluded value we had? Zero, right? So now I'm going to step uh, six, check it. Let's plug seven into this, see what we get. Five over seven plus eight over seven equals 13 over seven. Is that true? <coughs> yeah, how do you add the two fraction, fractions on the left side there? Five over seven plus eight over seven. Just add the tops because they already have the same denominator. So five plus eight is 13. 13 over seven is 13 over seven. Yes, last time I checked that works. So that's it, okay? Now, this is just the beginning and we have a little bit of time. What I'd like to do is let you work on this. This is for you to try right now. Two over X plus three over seven equals five over X. Now, here's the thing. This will be turned in for a quiz grade not today. It'll be turned in on Wednesday for a quiz grade. <coughs> and uh, so tear, you know, make sure it's on separate paper. Then don't write it on the back of your notes right now. Here's what I want to see. I don't want to see your quick way of doing it because you already know how to do this. I want you to write down the six steps in a very systematic way that I did. Because maybe you know how to do this and that's great. But what you need to get used to in this class is processes and steps and showing me those steps. Okay? And you can work together. I encourage you to, you know, meet your neighbor. Yes. What I did? Like all the work? Well, after you write that one down. Write it down. I want everyone to write the problem down first so, and so I can scroll up. No. It's just zero today. 
Yeah, it's just zero today. When we start class next time. Step one, to find excluded values. You, yeah, try to find excluded values. <clears throat> this doesn't happen often, but your only homework tonight is going to be to complete this, all right? I mean, that, that's it. And get your book and read the syllabus and all that, but you're not going to have a set of homework for tonight because really we haven't covered enough yet. That's your only homework. But it needs to be turned in as a quiz, and I'll be looking at it as if I'm grading it like an exam. Like, I want to see neatness. I want, to see, I, want, I want you to demonstrate to me what you've got. I mean, show some pride in what your, your work. Don't just be like scribble answer, but box it, you're done. You know. <clears throat> this first assignment will tell me a lot about you, I guess. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording.